Now, prices paid at auction for modern art have been breaking records. Andy Warhol's Triple Elvis went for £52 million. Picasso's Women of, Women of Algiers fetched £114 million. Are these riches good news for today's artists who are trying to pay their bills? Well, maybe if they can persuade big companies to part with money. Dan Damon reports. This building here is the Cotton Exchange. In central Liverpool, Lucy Byrne, founder of artbrokerage.art, is showing me where she's brought companies and artists together. We were asked when the reception was refurbished to produce some bespoke pieces of art very much based on the history of the building. This artist called Stephen Collett went into the archives, then scanned these images and printed them onto strips of canvas, which are then woven together. It makes a kind of mosaic. Yes, and it's to do with weaving and cotton. It's a completely bespoke piece which is about the building. Liverpool's redevelopment helped Lucy persuade companies to include local artists in their plans. Property owners, solicitors firms, wealth management firms, and we are currently working on a large commission piece to go all the way down this back wall here. And we're going to go meet that artist in a couple of minutes. That artist is Gary Beach, working in his studio on early sketches for a big canvas to cover that blank corporate wall. It's based on the colours of the offices, so it's greys, blacks, reds. That's the sketch, that's more or less what the paintings will look like when they're finished. So it's a triptych? It's a triptych, yeah. It's Castle Street in Liverpool, which is looking down towards the town hall. How important is this kind of work, then, to an artist trying to make a living? It's very important. It does give you that boost that you are taken seriously for what you're doing. I do like the corporate, I like the scale. Companies try to choose their art to match their brand. So tech companies like Google go for concept. Scott Phillips runs Rise Art, renting and selling contemporary art to ambitious executives. Many benefits. It can inspire employees to work, can lead innovation within the organization. And we'll rent them artworks on an ongoing basis, and they can rotate it periodically. One example, we commissioned a street artist to, to come in and actually like did graffiti on the walls. And then we've worked with Google. For some of it, it's really keeping artwork off the balance sheet. Like They want to be able to have artwork worth, worth hundreds of thousands of pounds in their office, but they don't necessarily want to pay that all up front in one go. It's tax efficient and it's something that actually keeps the office environment looking really fresh come through here we've got a show actually starting which is going to be impressionist and modern sort of late 19th century through until a bit of post-war actually including Andy Warhol for true prestige blue chip corporations go to Mayfair Adrian Bedell is a director of fine art brokers in Albemarle Street sourcing multi-million pound art and that proved risky for some companies in recent years there is a strong, strong opportunity for investment, but you need to be well advised. We've been through a recession. What did that do to corporations in art, and where are we now? Well, I think it made them think very, very carefully about what they had, and, and a lot of corporations decided this was not going to be an area that they were wanted to continue developing. On the other hand, there have been new corporations re-looking really at art as an alternative asset class, and there is definitely a, a super league of artists. Picasso, I'm thinking of Warhol, I'm thinking of Gerhard Richter, perhaps, as a living artist. It can become easier, if you like, for corporations to understand they are investing in something that has long-term durability. Some corporations make serious errors, according to Philip Hoffman of the Fine Art Fund Group. I remember the chief executive of one Swiss company ended up buying huge amounts of art and we went to have a look at it about two years ago and we walked into the staff canteen and there was a Gursky at about three million getting rather ruined by the smoke from the kitchens. I remember one chief executive who bought a wonderful Damien Hirst medicine cabinet and burnt his driver said, like, I'll move the medicine cabinet for you. And he walked in to see his medicine cabinet behind his desk. And he said, Bert, what have you done? And he said, well, I, I didn't really like the mismatch of order of the medicine bottles, so I've reordered them so that they're all in nice descending order. At the time, it was worth about a million pounds. You never give me your money. Back in Liverpool... Joe Thompson paints abstracts inspired by Beatles songs. Well, it is Liverpool. Do you like it? That's like the first chords and the drum piece of uh, She Loves You. I don't really know the song. I just start with any colours that I've got to portray emotions. 
art broker Lucy Byrne discovered Joe and has sold his work into corporate locations. And he needs her because he doesn't have the heart to sell them himself. <laughs> don't mind keeping older, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> but yeah, I know you've got to get, you've got to sell them to keep keep the money coming in. It's got tube of paint to be 25 quid. So would you meet somebody setting up an office or do you leave no, that I, to no, Lucy? I, no, I leave everything up to Lucy. That's my job. Right. <laughs> all, all I do is paint. <laughs> There's a disconnect in corporate art. It would be great if the big balance sheets at the top could start funding working artists at the other end. Dan Damon. Now here's Evan Davis.